Hello, this is Mark Armitage coming to you again from the California State University Biology Department Imaging Lab. And we're continuing our discussion and training on the Leica SP5 confocal microscope. Uh, once again, we want to thank the Keck Foundation for their generous support. And uh, of course, our videographer, uh, Brian, and all those who are helping behind the scenes. So thank you for your help. Now we're going to continue with where we left off last time on the LASAF software. By way of review, I want to remind you of the four tabs that are across the top left-hand side of the LASAF software screen. The configuration tab allows us to select the lasers and then turn on each laser. We have to apply power to each laser so that they're available to us during live imaging. For the argon laser, we also want to select a power of about 20%. So we, we click on that and it comes up, well in this case, it's up to 17%, which is fine. Anything at 20% or under. Once the lasers are turned on, we can go to our Acquire tab and begin our experiment. But again, by way of review, I want to point out to you the other two tabs that are up here. The Process tab is an important tab with many functions underneath it, which will allow you to do things like your 3D imaging, your maximum projection, your deconvolution, things of that nature. We'll cover these in future sessions. The Quantify tab is also very important for reporting your results in a graph format. And so uh, there are various selections here that you can choose to represent your data in graphic format, in tables, and uh, other such things. You can also look at the activity of the fluophore, the amount of intensity of the light that's being emitted from the fluophore, and which wavelengths it's being emitted at. So this is a very useful tab which you'll also get to know. But for right now, we're going to go back to the Acquire tab. And as you can see, we default to the visible spectrum. We're going to be selecting our laser lines here in a second and beginning our imaging. Remember that we have an Acquisition Mode tab, which should always be set for XYZ. We're always going to work in the XYZ mode. When the system first initializes, you will see the Z-Stack tab. We'll come back to that at the end of today's session. But for now, and by way of review, we'll go to the middle tab, which is the XY tab, and we're going to select the features that we need to run our experiment. Again, by way of review, you remember that we can select one of several different resolution formats. And this is the resolution of the digitizer. When the image is captured by the computer, it's stored in a digitizer in a certain format. The number of pixels across and number of pixels down in the XY digitizer. In this instance, the system defaults to 512 by 512. As we looked at last time, you can select a narrower window and we'll do that by selecting 1024 by 512, which will give us a long, narrow window, which allows the refresh rate to be a little faster so that we can position our slide the way we want it and uh, we can minimize photo bleaching. The system also defaults to a speed of 400 hertz. For now, we'll leave it at 400 hertz, but as we increase in resolution, you'll see that we might want to increase in the speed of the system to capture images faster and minimize photo bleaching. We're going to discuss pinhole a little bit during this session, and we're also going to discuss zoom factor. I want to also point out these series of arrows, which are useful to direct the right monitor, not this monitor, but the right monitor image to a specific region of interest. So we'll cover that also a little bit during this session. We're also going to discuss line average, how to improve our images by doing averaging of each scanned line, 
and we will discuss frame average. In this instance, we will uh, average each frame out a number of times uh, according to the number we select, and that will decrease background noise, it will increase our signal to noise ratio, and clean up our image. There are also two other tabs here uh, for accumulate. You can accumulate the number of lines, and so if you have a very dim specimen, each line that you scan can become added to the next line depending on the number that you select here. The same goes for frame accumulation. Very rarely will you use these, but in some cases you might have a very dim return on your fluorescence, so you might want to accumulate all that information. Finally, there's a rotation bar here, and that allows you to rotate your image, your digitized image, on the screen. 